Hello and welcome to XCOM. Today with a little bit of a different video. I have actually decided to um, start a new small series to see how it uh, works. It's called XCOM Diaries. A friendly user from Reddit has asked me to review one of his videos and I wanted to give some constructive criticism. That being said, before we jump into the video, if you like the idea of uh, these videos and if I should uh, look out for some more to review, uh, please leave some comments down below. I think it's a good learning opportunity for everyone to watch the video. Thank you for the user on Reddit to share the video with us. So without further ado, let's go into the video. A little bit of a word of advice. Uh, the user is playing on legendary difficulty to give some contextual information. He uh, has the basics figured out. I think he's actually a good player, but he's struggling to kind of iron out uh, the little mistakes that we all make uh, once in a while. And I'll uh, try to go into detail and still keep it in a reasonable fashion, 10 to 15 minutes, to see what one can do better. So the team that he is approaching the mission with is um, quite well versed. We are um, uh, seeing an early mid-game uh, field where uh, some of his weapons are upgraded to late. He clearly has uh, the first armor upgrade as well, so kind of early um, mid-game-ish. Uh, he's bringing two rangers, one of which is concealment uh, focused, uh, the other one um, is quite high level and already has employable, uh, placeable and is using a shotgun. He's bringing two specialists, one of which is a healing specialist, one of which is a combat protocol specialist. He brings one grenadier and one sniper. The only weapon that I, uh, the only two weapons that he hasn't upgraded yet are the ones from the grenadier and uh, the sniper, um, both the short, uh, more short-ranged uh, uh, weapons, so the rangers and the specialists have upgraded weapons. With that, uh, let's jump into it. I'll give kind of three different uh, types of suggestions here. Uh, suggestion uh, number one is always um, kind of around placement and positioning. Number two is a bit of uh, how I would probably approach certain situations a bit different. And number three is maybe something generally around skills, uh, allocation of resources, and so on. We're going to go relatively relatively fast through the video. If you want to see um, the entire video, I suggest you can also uh, look it up um, on YouTube yourself. But uh, we will uh, go and actually take a look um, at uh, twice the um, speed that, you're, uh, that you would normally be um, seeing. Uh, first um, movement, he's uh, trying to go for the neutral objective um, to essentially um, uh, go to the north and uh, uh, do a hack. Uh, he's moving everyone uh, into this position and this is kind of the first uh, um, uh, topic that I'd like to talk about. A few things that I would probably advise you to do a bit uh, different. So you did a very nice job in moving uh, first blue move and then essentially starting to scout with one uh, unit. Leaving units all the way up in the open I would almost never do that if a, a pack comes uh, patrolling. Um, they will get reaction shots and um, kind of uh, units in the open are prone to critical hits. So this is almost an invitation for trouble. Um, it seems that he has played the mission uh, multiple times, so he was sure that there was no one here. Um, if you're now looking a bit further from this position, uh, first set of tips. I would highly recommend you to take the entire squad and uh, take the high ground here. Uh, this intersection uh, will allow you to have uh, just such an easy time to fight from high ground. You'll get a huge aim benefit uh, by doing that. On the other hand, um, you can take um, almost all the way up to the objective without even encountering a pack, um, and uh, you can always drop down. The other topic that I want to highlight is for those who are aware and have uh, had a similar um, ha have had a similar um, mission. Um, I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, the um, situation here underneath the bridge. So this parcel um, is something that you are going to see very often um, underneath the bridge and it's probably one of the most, hands down, uh, one of the most difficult parcels to play along. Um, it's one where I learned over the time to simply avoid it, so I would not play through that parcel. I'd rather take either the um, street here 
or go all the way over to the left hand side and take uh, the movement over here. The problem with this parcel is it looks uh, not a, um, as if it would be a problem, but there are really a couple of things that are not really working well. There's only one opening here and one opening here. There's a huge uh, fence in between uh, both of them. Very uh, shady and kind of scrappy line of sight in between. Plus, there are a couple of uh, issues that you will uh, encounter. These box here, for instance, doesn't provide cover. So when you move from this side to that side, it, it's just not a really good uh, situation to, uh, uh, to do that. We're going to fast forward a bit. He's essentially moving all of uh, his uh, units up, uh, encounters um, a uh, pack of, uh, of enemies. We do have a Viper, a uh, Stun Lancer, and I think... Um, I don't remember the third one. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it's an Advent Shield Bearer as the, as the third unit uh, right there. So pretty tough um, uh, pack uh, to begin with. Uh, you can see that he's already struggling finding the right uh, positions. He's trying to find uh, cover here, which again uh, doesn't really work out. So my suggestion would be to enable your character's uh, properly, just completely avoid uh, that um, uh, that field. We're going to fast forward a bit to the next uh, uh, scene. So this is the next scene, a scene that I wanted to review, which is his first attempt to engage a pack. Um, let's talk a little bit about Overwatch uh, engages because he's trying to uh, f uh, figure one out. And there are a couple of mistakes uh, within how he's uh, playing it in my perspective. So he does have six soldiers. Uh, we're looking at uh, three enemies. Um, each of them has six, seven hit points. In this case, uh, the uh, shield bearer, even two armor. So we're looking at uh, roughly 20 hit points with a little bit of armor on top of it. Uh, what he's going to do is he's going to set up a few overward shots and then on top of it uh, he's going to throw a normal grenade into it. A few mistakes that happen here. Number one, um, he's overwatching one of the rangers with um, Phantom. Uh, you need to know that Phantom not only lets people, uh, lets your XCOM agents stay in cover, in concealment rather, it also prevents them from taking overwatch shots because they will simply ignore um, uh, the enemies. A, a couple of other things that are not going um, according to plan. He's using his sniper uh, for overwatch traps. And I've said that in many of my videos over and over again. The sniper with his rifle has an inherent um, uh, negative ba uh, malice. Uh, to um, a multiplier of 0 0.7 to even hit overwatch shots. Uh, the the only gra saving grace for him is that he's in concealment, so he's not getting another um, negative to that. I would not use snipers for uh, overwatch. It usually is, uh, is not worth it. Uh, plus, uh, you usually, um, if you were to follow the logic of positioning him in, on higher ground, you could uh, benefit from death from above and much higher hit chances to begin with. Um, target prioritization, let's uh, kind of roll the clip. Target prioritization that he does afterwards is um, a bit uh, concerning because uh, it seems that he's starting to panic and uh, with the panic uh, there are a couple of... Um, yeah, there are a couple of mistakes that are happening. Here's the frag grenade that I was talking about. Uh, so frag grenade itself uh, deals nine points of damage. That's generally fine. Um, but I probably wouldn't have opened with a frag grenade. Um, his grenadier had an acid grenade. And the acid grenade really shines when dealing with armor. Uh, you have a target with two armor. He will not encounter another target with two armor. So this was the perfect position to actually use uh, the acid grenade. Would have done more damage, would have uh, created an acidic um, uh, underlying uh, so that they would have taken additional damage. Here you see the overworld shots. He, be, he gets lucky, uh, hits a couple of them. But that's not really what I want to talk about. Uh, we want to talk about what can be improved. So now, what? You have uh, injured all three of them, but you haven't really killed something. You, quote unquote, uh, utilized three actions for that. And you're left with a heavy uh, that, again, could use his grenade here. Probably um, easily kill off uh, one of them and heavily injure them, but you could have also started with a heavy, so um, it feels that there is a bit of potential wasted, and now there are really a few issues uh, that uh, that I would be seeing. Number one, um, 
here you are moving your ranger um, out of a concealment position into a flanking position but you're doing a, a yellow move uh, which essentially means he's doing nothing and loses concealment. Uh, that is really tragic um, because the ranger could have just moved uh, to here and killed uh, and killed him. Um, like I originally said I don't like to play through that area because you can now see that it is very difficult to advance. You need to go through this middle uh, section here. So that's right there uh, an, an error. I would suggest always to move first before you uh, start shooting and don't just give up one of your um, actions. This here could have been a dead stun lancer right away. Um, he then continues uh, to um, basically take a few moves. He really struggles to find a good placement here. I don't think that this placement is really any good because you can be flanked. Um, if I'd be in this position, I would probably move to here or uh, even advance to here and then uh, flop a grenade. This here is really a solid wall. There's no uh, no one coming through it. By the way, uh, these pylons here cannot be um, destroyed, so it's indestructible terrain, uh, which also gives you kind of uh, some certainty that they will not just uh, move towards you. The shot here is rather lucky um, uh, to uh, to make it, and I would not um, let it go down or um, get it down to luck. He takes a lot of damage in retaliation. Uh, the panic puts him in the, a bad position. And this here almost looks like it could spiral into the wrong uh, situation. All basically from uh, uh, from uh, having a bad situation. So let's look at that engage again. He had the upper uh, hand um, and he ended up effectively killing only one. He took a step damage from, uh, from the stun lancer that could have knocked him out. And he even took some extra damage. Um, how I would have suggested that you could have played uh, that engagement. Ignore the overwatch shots. They just are not good here. Uh, and there are two ways of how you could have uh, dealt with it. Number one, you could have used one of your rangers and simply taken a, uh, taken a shot uh, right uh, from the get-go. Uh, they are op in open terrain, so you do have massive crit chance and would have probably killed uh, one of them immediately. Vipers cannot dodge uh, when they are uh, being shot from concealment, so that would have been a really nice first target. Another option would have been the acid grenade to uh, to get them down and then essentially hunt them down. Don't waste that extra action um, and essentially don't use an overwatch uh, um, uh, trap here if you have such beefy targets. Uh, the target selection, you need to do the target selection. Good. We're um, continuing with the next um, uh, with the next scene. I'll fast forward a little bit, but just as a description, um, he will mop up this pack and we're going to go to the next engagement. Good, here we are again. Uh, this is the second pack um, uh, and how he encounters it. Uh, first uh, thing that I would need uh, to note is uh, there's probably a bit of uh, placement issue of um, his soldiers. So he had a, a round of rest. Uh, he hasn't used uh, the healing protocol to heal up his soldier, which means you're uh, you're running the inherent risk that your uh, grenadier might die. Secondly, sniper very much exposed to the front line, grenadier somewhat on the flank, and the um, front units, so specifically both of the rangers, are not really at the front. How I would suggest that you position yourself, sniper up here, um, the specialists up here, grenadier either up here or behind the half cover here, and then the um, uh, both of uh, the uh, rangers um, in front, uh, the assaults. Um, that will give you much better um, uh, front-to-back uh, team fighting uh, capability. This here is very scrappy, and you will see with his positioning how it uh, makes the whole uh, situation even worse. So he goes in with one of the rangers, um, encounters uh, the pack. Uh, we're looking at a very standard uh, pack, which is Stun Lancer, um, uh, one of the captains, and a single advanced trooper. Um, and here are a couple of things that uh, I would like to uh, point out. You're trying to find a flank, which generally is okay, but uh, this here is a pretty straightforward encounter. Uh, you can remove most of the cover, which you're um, intending to do. 
definitely don't stand half in the open. That is a much better uh, turn. And I think this here is really a good play. Uh, it's one of the strongest ones that I've seen from him um, in the entire mission, which is essentially using the advanced um, granite launcher, uh, which um, uh, gives you uh, additional chance to destroy cover and putting all of them out of cover. So that was a game winning move right there. But, and here is the big uh, uh, however, um, if you now had the chance to probably follow up, you wouldn't be in such a, a dire uh, condition. With Death From Above and a Sniper up here, you could uh, kill this guy, fish for some damage on the Stun Lancer, and then continue to harass the Stun Lancer. Um, we're going to see how he um, uh, plays it, which I think he takes a lot more chances. Um, again, uh, some uh, thoughts around your positioning. You're now taking individual shots um, and you're not moving uh, your uh, units before uh, uh, before you do so. Try to um, change your behavior here and always blue move first uh, with all of the units and then take your uh, shots. Um, also target uh, priority. The captain himself um, is not the high priority target. They have approximately the same aim as uh, the advanced soldiers and all they do is mark a target. He's standing in the open so the AI will uh, move him into cover and afterwards he's going to mark a target. So that's a dead, uh, that's a ensured zero damage in the next round. So it should be the last target that you're targeting. Stun Lancer should be the highest target, not even uh, uh, not even seconded by anything else. And then the second one um, is uh, the uh, the advanced soldier. So a bit of target selection, a bit of positioning uh, that I'm seeing here, which can be done better, and a bit of ineffective use of action. So he does have his uh, uh, his uh, specialist here. And the one tip that I would like to give you to your, for your specialists is uh, use the action economy better. Uh, you can use a heal and then take a shot and that's a great option to have basically two actions. Instead you're moving in and uh, taking a shot whilst one of your soldiers is at one hit point. I probably wouldn't do that and instead I would uh, use more action economy. Uh, you're going to see that he's mopping up uh, this pack. Uh, so there's really not that much more to um, critique or to, to, su uh, to suggest. He's taking a couple of um, okay uh, spots here, but overall I think it could have uh, gone cleaner. He's, um, he's putting a lot of yeah, chances or he's, he's uh, relying on a lot of hit chances uh, to get through that. We're going to jump to the um, second last uh, topic. Which is this one here. He has mopped up uh, the pack and he uh, now sees that the network shutdown is going to happen in three turns. Um, and this is where he panics. Um, uh, he moves in uh, straight into the open just to hack the workstation. Absolutely unnecessary with three turns to go. What I would suggest you to do is, so first of all, why it's unnecessary. Um, network uh, mm, uh, shutdowns can trigger additional packs, which means uh, you're going to uh, risk reinforcements. Your, uh, most of your uh, guys are out of position. You still haven't healed um, your, uh, your soldier. So there is a lot um, of uh, potential that you can do in order to improve your current position. Uh, and no one's forcing you to uh, to do it uh, right away. You still have two other uh, two more turns. What I would suggest uh, in this situation is simply move to the high ground, uh, get a better position, heal everyone, and then never go into the open, um, but instead uh, go behind cover. And naturally, what happens right after he finishes uh, this is he triggers reinforcements. He is now two soldiers standing in the open, uh, which is really, really bad. This situation uh, uh, could be disastrous if um, those would be caught out. Uh, they uh, would be shot at. Um, in all fairness, one of his uh, soldiers uh, here, uh, the ranger, is still in cover. He has uh, re-stealth, uh, so that's fine. Um, but the uh, most important uh, one, uh, uh, specialist, is outside of cover. He's still trying to uh, figure out uh, good half cover spots. I'm not sure why you're taking a half cover spot here instead of a full cover non-destroyable spot here. So this and this and up 
stairs should be your prime positions you should never take half cover if you can take full cover that's indestructible this is such a good position uh, to begin with but um, these are minor topics uh, the more major topics uh, that i'm seeing here are positioning 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 um, he knows that there is another pack uh, incoming and i'm wondering why he's not taking overwatch shots right away because here you could have taken overwatch shots and now the struggle really begins. We're going to see a uh, full pack, uh, Captain um, Stun Lancer and another, um, and another um, uh, soldier. And we're seeing at the same time that uh, there is a Viper, um, another trooper and um, a Codex. And this is where it really um, kind of uh, becomes a bit closer. Now, here is how I would suggest you're approaching the situation and we're going to see what uh, he is doing. Um, seeing that there is kind of a front-to-back fight, he's, by the way, lucky that he has lost uh, this unit here. Uh, they could have taken multiple shots because he's standing in the open. Um, so how I would approach uh, this situation is um, you should probably make sure that one uh, of the flanks is being taken care of. So nice flashbang, for instance, on the left-hand side, um, could solve for it and then focus on the right hand side and just really kill um, as many of them as possible. Um, we're going to see that he's using quite a few um, uh, resources on that and even a mimic beacon that he's brought with him which I think is the right uh, call to use in, in this. Um, although little info, his sniper has the mimic beacon, I probably wouldn't do that. If I'd be in your shoes, uh, to be honest, the sniper with the Mimic Beacon is not a good uh, choice. Mimic Beacon should predominantly be on uh, specialists uh, because they have two actions. They can heal and then throw a Mimic Beacon, which is a supreme use of resources and action economy. Uh, alternatively, I would suggest putting it on uh, the Ranger, um, but not on the sniper because he's usually too far behind. Um, and should be used for that. Okay, long story short, he's now going to engage them. Um, he's uh, considering the full cover that I uh, talked about and then really doesn't fully know what to do. Problem here is if you again were on high ground, you wouldn't need to um, be in such a kind of mediocre situation to, uh, to begin with. Um, he's considering using uh, the flashbang grenade, which he's going to uh, uh, use uh, to um, uh, grenade uh, the left flank, like I suggested. Um, I like this play here. It's a very solid um, flank, but at the same time, uh, you can uh, you have again used uh, your movement instead of healing, uh, so it it really makes the uh, the um, mission more close than it uh, needs to be. His Grenadier is still at one hit point, so if the Viper decides to poison spit, you're gone. Uh, it's, there's not even a chance to survive that. Um, and now he's trying to just figure out how to deal with it. A uh, few tips here. This guy uh, can be flanked. This here is an excellent uh, spot uh, uh, for, uh, for a position for you. Um, you still do have your swords, I'm not sure if you've upgraded them, but um, they aren't so bad either. So if you wound someone and then go in with a sword, it's actually a pretty decent option. Plus you do have Implaceable, so you can uh, always move back. Um, he has not skilled run and gun, which I cannot understand. So he probably uh, should have skilled run and gun, moved up all the way here, killed him, and then Implaceable back. Uh, same uh, deal uh, for the sword. So that's how you probably should have uh, played it. He's just taking the shots and gets lucky with the crits, so that's fine. There's the placeable. Um, and we're going to fast forward because we're almost uh, nearing the end. Because I want to talk about one more thing. Alright, fast forward to the last part of the engagement. He killed off most of uh, the soldiers on the left hand side, used the mimic beacon uh, to uh, detract. And now this is a classical situation where I would say um, where I would say you should um, actively engage the enemy and be aggressive. 
uses um, his uh, combat protocol uh, to finish off um, uh, to finish off enemies. I'm not the biggest fan of combat protocol, by the way. Um, I would always suggest in, to to go for healing instead. But I know that some people really like it. Uh, there are going to be some other uses of Comet Protocol that he's soon going to use against uh, the Codex where he's not using it to finish off the Codex and that is definitely a mistake. Comet Protocol shouldn't be used to quote unquote damage the enemy. He's now using his Acid Grenade just to kill off the Viper. Imagine if you would have used it earlier, uh, you wouldn't have uh, only dealt one point of damage but essentially like nine uh, plus uh, mm, the Acid damage plus the Shredding damage. So it would have been a way more high value grenade. And now this is where I wanted to do the review. He really struggles with uh, the uh, Codex, by the way, uh, the Grenadier is still not healed. This is the first time that he heals uh, the Grenadier, in my perspective, way too late. Um, and now here it comes. The Codex is still flashbang, that's why he's taking the shot. And the enemy is uh, trying to like take a solid position here. Uh, luckily misses all of the shots so that's good. This is the prime position where you need to be aggressive. The correct play here is to ignore the codex. The codex is now stopping to be uh, flashbang which means the codex will teleport and uh, psi bomb so just ignore it. This is your main target. Only has six hit points. Before you do anything else you should charge in and kill this guy. Ignore that you are being flanked by the Codex. The Codex will anyways teleport and the AI will not use a flanking uh, situation. Instead, he's now trying to kind of set up the flank here on the left hand uh, side. Um, you see how difficult it is to find a proper flank and that's just because the movement is not uh, uh, large enough. So he then starts shooting into full cover, which I think is not really helpful. You should have, probably should have moved up to here, taken shots, or alternatively, again, run and gun would have uh, helped to uh, move up all the way here into his face. Even using uh, the sword is not an, uh, a bad option here. So we're seeing uh, that he's taking sniper shots into full cover. He's lucky uh, to hit them, but I wouldn't uh, let it go down to chances. He's now using uh, the um, damage protocol. Again, that's what I meant with a mistake. I'm not using damage protocol to um, deal damage, uh, only to finish off um, or to remove Overwatch. And uh, ironically, the Overwatch will be um, the one thing uh, that will happen next turn. So he's uh, using essentially all of uh, his shots onto the Codex, which in my perspective would be the lower threat. He wants to make sure that it does not clone itself. Currently it has uh, had very bad experiences with the clones um, and uh, does not pri or therefore prioritizes it too high. Um, as a reaction, this orientation is removed. Um, he put a couple of his own soldiers onto Overwatch which results into A, uh, the Psy Bomb, and B, an Overwatch from the enemy. Which, if you wouldn't have used your combat protocol, this is the perfect time uh, to get rid of uh, the Overwatch. Alternatively, charge in with your sword and simply kill it. Um, this concludes it. He'll essentially mop up uh, both of uh, them, but still takes a shot um, with the Overwatch. Overall, um, I would say um, a good... Uh, mission uh, to learn a couple of things. If I could summarize the three main topics that I would uh, suggest you to work on. Number one, uh, be a bit more rigid about your movement. Make sure that you first um, use the blue moves and then take all of the shots. Um, and with the movement also make sure that you have a better coherent positioning. It's a bit too scrappy and a bit all over the place. Frontline assaults, then um, the um, grenadiers, then uh, the specialists, and then afterwards the sniper. If you could find kind of that front to um, back uh, fighting um, uh, phalanx, you will have better results. Number two, be more effective with your moves. There are um, several mistakes, double move uh, without a shot, um, wasting an action on Overwatch, although you can't really um, over, uh, Overwatch, um, not using uh, the healing, although you could uh, do it, wasting a, uh, a uh, Comet Protocol here without moving into a better position. Always think about 
how you can uh, essentially uh, use all of the actions uh, beforehand. And even if it's just a reload, look, uh, some of your um, soldiers only have one more shot and there's nothing more um, irritating than uh, running out of ammunition when you can actually uh, kill an um, opponent. And number three would probably be target selection. Um, I think it would be wise if you're reviewing some of the cooldowns and the abilities uh, that uh, the enemies are using. For instance, the approach to the Codex, I would have probably taken a different one. Um, he still had all of his cooldowns and he's definitely going for um, the Psy Bomb uh, first. It feels that um, you're still being a bit surprised about what the enemies can do, but don't worry, that will come uh, over time. We are all uh, learning. XCOM is a very, very difficult game, and I think you're already uh, playing it on a, a good level. So good luck with the rest of the campaign, and I hope everyone found a couple of uh, helpful comments. See you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.